Pokemon Media. I'm Jack Parks here with Mr. Wood. Mr. Wood, how's your day going today? It's going good, Jack. Uh, Friday, we got the Halloween uh, fall bash tonight, so great day all around. How about yourself? Yeah. Good, thanks for asking. Yeah, yeah. Let's get into the questions. Describe the decision to stop from math after teaching social studies for 12 years. Yeah, so that was a decision I've been thinking about for a few years. I was just uh, glad that everything kind of aligned for me to have that opportunity. And I love social studies. I love teaching it. I'm passionate about it. But I was just interested in trying out something that's maybe a bit more like skills-based and changing up maybe my style of teaching and just challenging myself to learn a little bit more um, as I kind of progress into kind of the second part of my career, I guess. Do you ever think you'll teach another subject? You never know. I mean, I, I have a lot of just vast interests. I mean, honestly, mostly I just enjoy teaching, so subject is not as important to me. <laughs> what impact do you hope to make on each of your students by the end of the year? Really, I hope they just come away feeling like they've been around teachers like myself and others that just know them, see them, care about them, uh, and have helped lay a pretty good foundation that they can build upon moving in through middle school and high school. Um, that would be my biggest goal. Tell me about your love of music. Did you ever think you are going to be a musician instead of a teacher? Yeah, you know, uh, that was definitely the case. I started out as a music major um, and have always enjoyed show choir, performance, musical theater. Uh, I was in band. Uh, I've played in lots of bands. And at some point, you know, I, I could still be a musician. Who knows? I, I like to think I'm a lifelong musician. And, I like to take advantage of opportunities, whether that's at church or playing with a group of folks somewhere, uh, whenever that arises. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's, it's a huge passion of mine, and, and who knows what the future holds with that. So Very cool. I understand both of your parents are teachers. Did this influence you to become a teacher? Absolutely. It's probably the number one reason I'm a teacher is both my parents and seeing the impact they had on people. I grew up in Tuscaloosa, and it seemed like everywhere we went, we'd run into a couple of people that knew my mom or my dad. And that really just made me want to be able to kind of leave that legacy and make that impact on others like they did. Do you ever think your kids will be teachers in the future? I think they might. I just want to encourage them to do what they're passionate about. I could definitely see my oldest daughter being a teacher. I think she's kind of got that. But, you know, for most folks, I just say, you know, whatever you're passionate about, whatever you enjoy, pursue that and see where it takes you. What is the funniest or scary thing a student has ever said or done in your classroom? <laughs> Um, so that, that's how I, I, I can just remember like a lot of random events that have happened throughout my teaching career. Uh, like for instance, just earlier this year, I had a can explode in the refrigerator and it just, the whole class, I mean, it was terrifying how loud it was. Uh, or one time there was a snake outside the classroom door. Um, uh, or of course, 10 years ago, we spent the night here uh, with the ice storm and that was I mean, just stinky, gross middle schoolers all laying on my carpet. Um, and what we just, there's been some crazy memories that I'm really thankful for. Just usually you don't remember the, the normal stuff, you know, you remember the crazy. So. How did you take care of all those kids in your room? <laughs> That's a good question. When we were in, you know, I think it ended up about 20 kids slept in my room. I was teaching seventh grade that year and me and another teacher slept just sitting in desk chairs with our feet propped up and we watched a couple movies and I think around like midnight we were just like, y'all have to try to go to bed. Uh, we played dodgeball a lot at night and uh, in the gym, and the cafeteria made all the best food. Uh, so it was really, overall, it was a good time. <laughs> I understand you have three children. Oh, no, wait, hold on, wait. No, you're fine. Wait, oh, no, no. I understand you have three children. What do you do with them in your free time? Yeah, so uh, I really just like, I mean, we spend a lot of time outdoors, going to parks, going to the zoo, uh, McWayne Center, and really just whatever they're into. Um, you know, like uh, my son's got a soccer game tonight, and that's one of the great things about being a parent is just getting to watch them enjoy the things they're doing. Tell me about your future after teaching. Uh, well, who knows? I hope to have another good 20 years or so in me, and uh, at some point when I retire or change careers, I would hope that I'm still doing something to invest in kids, youth, uh, and just, you know, um, I don't know. I hope it doesn't change too much is what I'm saying. Very or, cool. Yeah. I'm Jack Parks from Oak Mountain Media, here with Mr. Wood. Have a wonderful day.